we submitted these recommendations uh, uh, and developed these recommendations over the course of the um, uh, over the summer uh, when the uh, um, Sacramento Police Department had initially released um, from the spring of the summer uh, when the Sacramento Police Department had uh, released its initial draft of the um, uh, military of its military equipment use policy, which is now required for all law enforcement agencies under AB 481. Um, and one of the key principles and spirits of uh, AB 41 was to create meaningful uh, transparency um, for uh, uh, from uh, our local police departments and sheriff's departments um, to really give us a sense of how the military how the military equipment that they are purchasing and using um, is used and the purpose of its use, as well as um, to create a formal process for how we are. Uh, for how they might be used. Um, and it was very clear um, that uh, that state lawmakers made this in expli explicitly for uh, the purpose of ensuring that our uh, that this uh, military equipment and weapons are not used um, primarily against uh, like oftentimes communities of color, which um, uh, even the legislature had recognized um, is are disproportionately impacted by the use of these uh, of this equipment. And uh, with that in mind, they actually made very clear that um, AB4 uh, and AB41 uh, to, for the city council to only approve military equipment use policies and um, pursuant to the uh, to pursuant to that law um, if it determines all of the following requirements. Namely, uh, first, that the military equipment is necessary because there is no reasonable alternative that can achieve the same objective of officer and civilian safety. That the proposed military equipment use policy will safeguard the public's welfare, safety, civil rights, and civil liberties. If purchasing the military equipment uh, is reasonably cost effective compared to available alternatives that can achieve the same objective of officer and civilian safety. And prior to military equipment use complied with the that prior military equipment use complied with the military equipment use policy that was in effect at the time, or if prior uses did not comply with the accompanying military equipment use policy, corrective action has been taken uh, to remedy non-conforming uses and ensure future compliance. So when we read that, we really understand that the city council has a responsibility of ensuring that SPD not only follows AB 41, but also ensures that any policy it approves is safeguarding the public's welfare, safety, civil rights, and civil liberties simultaneously. Um, so that's why we came up with those recommendations. And we've tried, uh, we tried throughout that process to uh, work with the police department and made several offers to even support in the drafting process, as well as the community conversations that had taken place. Unfortunately, the Sacramento Police Department rejected all recommendations from the civil, uh, from our uh, advisory body and disregarded many community concerns raised about the, uh, the policy that was ultimately approved, which is why we are continuing to like to support these recommendations and encourage the city, uh, the city council to um, take those into consideration when it has to uh, review and uh, when it's time to re review and approve uh, the military equipment use policy on an annual basis as required in AB 41. Gotcha. So in theory, the restrictions for um, purchasing uh, military equipment like this are essentially it has like you have to find a reason uh, sort of to validate the purchase. Exactly. I mean, the the equipment like the, those requirements that I mentioned are like they have to all be met simultaneously. It's not just one or the other. So the military equipment that is being requested for purposes has to be like, they. the department has to actually show that there is no reasonable alternative that can achieve the same objective of officer and civilian safety. And that if purchasing the equipment, the equipment is reasonably cost-effective compared to available alternatives. From my understanding of, um, of what has been passed, like of previous uses of particularly the Rook, um, the department actually has access to um, uh, available Rooks from um, like from neighboring law enforcement agencies, particularly the Sacramento Sheriff's Department, um, which it has been able to like have access to um, with as much as a phone call. So the idea that, you know, in a time when we are a Approaching what the city council or city manager has made has made clear that we may be facing a uh, looming budget deficit in the coming year. Um, it doesn't make sense for me to like that we're uh, we're spending over five hundred like almost five hundred thousand um, dollars to purchase a uh, like this piece of military equipment, the Rook, uh, when we could actually be contributing those dollars in other areas. Which, according to my like my understanding, the grant that they are talking about applying it under. Um, 
could be applied that doesn't require the city to purchase equipment like this and um the additional like the additional funding that comes out of the city's discretionary budget i understand um from the item actually comes out of the part the department of public works which could easily contribute those into other areas that uh, meet uh broader community needs than just this one i have yet to see any explanation of how this equipment is necessary when the Sacramento Police Department already has access to one. And uh, from, based on their recent reports, uh, their uh, last annual use reports, does like they don't actually use more than a handful of times out of the year. So you don't believe, and forgive me if I'm putting words in your mouth, but that the cost of this military vehicle, the Rook, is um, worth the amount of times that they use it since they already have access to like the Sac County Sheriff's Office version of it? I don't believe that they do. And I'm speaking for myself as um, in, as as a commissioner, um, you know, appointed by my council member. Um, but I don't like, but I have yet to see any actual uh, reasonable explanation within the item that is uh, currently before city council, or at least the public documents that are available there, um, as well as uh, my knowledge and uh, an understanding of both the city's budget um, and uh, the past conversations around the military equipment use policy from the military equipment use report uh, that the department put out. We are, uh, our commission as a whole is still actually waiting for uh, the Sacramento Police Department to uh, provide an update on where the military equipment use policy is at um, following its passage back on September 13th, 2022. Um, and we're still, like, we will still continue to ask for that and hopefully we'll uh, be getting some uh, more answers and updates um, uh, both from the departments uh, during a, one of our next public meetings, which is on February 13th, um, uh, as and future uh, public meetings, or uh, within its next annual use report. Gotcha. So um, we've touched a little bit upon like the usage of military vehicles and, for lack of a better word, weaponry in this sense. Um, do you have any idea what the Rook is actually used for? Because I personally don't. I haven't. I didn't have the time to look into it before this call, but. Do you have any idea what this truck would be used for with SAC PD? Uh, you're you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry about that. Um, so. The Rook is basically an armored bulldozer uh, that's uh, used by uh, Sacramento's uh, uh, SWAT teams um, that's capable of both like, you know, uh, and like entering through um, uh, breakable walls, uh, such as the walls of houses, as well as transporting um, uh, personnel up to uh, the second story of, uh, of multiple story buildings. Um, and from my understanding, this would actually be the third armored vehicle that the police department has purchased in the recent years. Um, and they've already have access, like, again, they already have access to this, uh, this piece of technology uh, through the sheriff's department. And from uh, what we have gathered from uh, both recent commentary uh, following the murder of uh, Tyree Nichols um, to also past comments by the, uh, uh, by the chief of police and the most uh, in the recent um, recently elected uh, Sacramento County Sheriff Jim Cooper, that, there is a there is a longstanding partnership between uh, Sacramento Police Department and Sacramento County Sheriff's Department. So I can't understand how they wouldn't have access to the Rook um, uh, whenever they need, and why we couldn't actually um, save this money and allocate it in more pressing issue areas than this. I sit like I simply haven't heard how this is a necessary item, and I don't see how that will, like that would apply or um, or comply with uh, state law under AB forty one. So let's touch up on a little bit more of um, the where the funding could go if they do not spend it, like the nearly five hundred um, thousand or million dollars um, that we talked about earlier. Where do you think this money would be better used? You're muted sorry. again. Sorry, <laughs> I saw that. Uh, I think it could be used in a number of different areas, um, not just you know within the department, uh, but also in areas of public works. We could uh, easily be using that um, to support our um, uh, like our housing apparatus uh, to you know provide uh, more shelter given the, the number of home, un, un, unhoused people that are uh, living out on the streets. But I mean, in the context of public safety um, and addressing you know. Um, under the uh, UASI grants uh, that they're talking about, um, you know, if we're talking about addressing uh, risks and um, and hazards and 
uh, and such under terrorism, we could actually be addressing the root causes of those issues, which a lot of times we're talking about, you know, uh, people that don't have their basic needs met, um, that have consistently been either abandoned or underinvested or divested from um, within our, like, by our local governments, uh, state governments, and our national governments. And we could be actually addressing those root causes to make sure that people have the needs they need, or at least, addr like, address some of those underlying symptoms. Like, if we're talking about, like, the recent office, uh, the Office of Violence Prevention, which could easily be distributing those funds um, to local community-based groups that are already in the like area of you know um, meeting or of you know of violence of working on violence prevention um, and, and you know gang intervention and so on and so forth. So there are like I could think of a multiple different like other places in which they can go that address much more urgent needs that the community is facing rather than just giving uh, the department another. Um, fancy new pieces of equipment that it really doesn't have, like, it really doesn't have a basic, a, a real necessity. Gotcha. And I don't want to take up too much more of your time. So we're going to wrap up here. But is there any other information uh, that you would want me or our viewers to know about that I didn't specifically ask about on this topic? Yes, I mean, this is uh, for you know, for better or worse, the first opportunity that we have a brand new city council, and this is their first opportunity um, to really show where their priorities lie and how those priorities um, and values align uh, with the community members they serve. And we, like we in Sacramento, have so many press, like so many pressing needs in this moment in time, um, especially given um, the, like you know, the attention that is being paid upon. Um, Law enforcement, like on law enforcement accountability, police accountability, um, as well as police brutality. I mean, we have, like, you know, as the most recent reporting has shown, police officers have killed more than 1,100 people um, in just 2022. And that is the most that they have ever killed on record. And it's been consistently over 1,000 people that have been killed by police every single year. And we still don't have meaningful civilian oversight or accountability, especially here in Sacramento. So, this is really going to be a test, uh, I believe, for our new city council uh, and particularly our new city council members to really like deter like really show not just talk about, but really show the community where their priorities and values at and how they align with those uh, with everybody's shared interests, not just a few with like, you know, who support or are working within law enforcement. 